Hey, hey guys, Adam here with an important educational video. In this video, we'll explore how piston engines and jet engines work and how they differ in terms of aircraft performance. This is a topic that is rarely discussed, and at the end of the video, I'll conclude on the relative merits of piston versus jet engines and if the jet technology was advanced enough to be worth putting in a fighter during World War II. Without further ado, let's thrust right into it. Let's start with a summary of how piston engines work. There are nice animations on YouTube and elsewhere of how engines work, so I'll be brief. First, the outside air enters the air intake. Then, the air is compressed by an impeller which is either mechanically run by the engine, which would make it a supercharger, or driven by exhaust gases, which would make it a turbocharger, like in this image. The reason why the engine compresses the air even before it enters the cylinders is to increase the air density of the intake to fit more oxygen in the limited cylinder volume, to burn more fuel, to produce more power. The compressed air then enters the cylinders, the piston compresses the air and fuel is injected and then ignited, which pushes the piston back down, producing the engine power. Regardless of the speed of the aircraft, engine power will stay essentially constant. This is important to remember. After the hot and high pressure air pushes down on the piston, it exits through exhaust pipes and gives a small amount of thrust when doing so. Producing power is good and all, but what the aircraft needs is thrust. The way you produce thrust from power is by connecting a propeller to the engine, which will absorb the engine power and accelerate the air around it, creating thrust. You can think of a propeller as a rotating wing with its own lift and drag. Since the propeller is never 100% efficient due to drag, some of the engine power is lost in the conversion. We call the conversion efficiency propeller efficiency, since the propeller is mainly responsible for this conversion efficiency. A good propeller is around 85% efficient at converting engine power into thrust. Time to talk about a basic but important equation. Power is converted into thrust through the following equation. Thrust is equal to prop efficiency times power divided by the speed of the aircraft. This means that thrust decreases as speed increases for a given power, as you can see on this graph of the P51H engine thrust as a function of speed. So, if speed doubles, the thrust from a piston engine is halved. The reason for this is because it takes an increasing amount of power to further accelerate the air the faster it's already going, since kinetic energy is proportional to speed squared. This is a big reason why piston engines aren't suitable for high-speed aircraft, but they are efficient for low-speed aircraft. The jet engine works differently. Air enters the intake, which changes the flow speed into something more suitable for the engine to operate in. Then, the air is compressed by the compressor, increasing its pressure and temperature. The hot and pressurized air is then mixed with fuel and ignited in the combustion chamber, increasing its temperature by around 1000 degrees Celsius. As the air flows past the turbine, some of the energy of the flow is extracted by the turbine to drive the compressor. The nozzle at the end of the engine accelerates the higher energy air to give it a very high exhaust speed, and the difference between the exhaust speed and the intake speed gives the thrust. Turbojet performance is given in terms of thrust directly, because thrust is essentially constant with speed for a jet, as you can see on this graph of a typical turbojet thrust as a function of speed. That's because the exhaust speed is very high on a jet, so the intake speed increasing has a lower effect on thrust on a jet, as opposed to a prop. Further, as speed increases, the air is slowed down and compressed by the intake, which increases the pressure and hence the air density in the engine, which allows for higher mass flow and more fuel burn, which increases thrust. These two effects combined keep thrust relatively constant with speed, which is much better than a piston engine for high speed flight. The goal of this video is to compare the performance of a piston engine versus a jet engine. To do that, we need a basic flight model. I chose the characteristics roughly resembling a P51D, but with average drag. So, 4000 kg, 20 square meters of wing area, 5.5 aspect ratio, a swell coefficient of 0.85, and a drag coefficient of 0.02. Now we need to choose piston and jet engines to compare fairly. For the piston engine, I chose the engine with the best power to rate ratio I could think of, which is the P51H's Packard 1650-9 engine with 2,239 horsepower and with a mass of 791 kilograms. 
This engine achieves this power with water injection, so it's a very good power to weight ratio engine. For the jet engine, the Yumo 004 was chosen with a thrust of 910 kg and a mass of 720 kg. I chose the Yumo because it's a first generation jet engine with limitations, so it's a rather bad jet engine by comparison to future designs. Since we want a fair comparison and hence same engine weights, I took the thrust weight ratio of the Yumo 004 and multiplied it by the weight of the P50H engine to get the thrust of the Yumo if both engines weighed the same. Now that we have the engines and the fictional aircraft representative of a World War II fighter, let's equip one fighter with a P-51H engine and the other with a jet engine with the same thrust to weight as the Yumo 004 but with the P-51H's engine mass. Since it's the same aircraft and hence wing loading, the turn radius will be equal for both aircraft. As for rate of climb, let's check out the graph. This is a graph of the rate of climb as a function of speed for the piston engine in blue and the jet engine in red. For more information on rate of climb and how it's calculated, check out my rate of climb video linked in the top right corner of the video. As you can see, the prop engine has a big advantage at low speed with twice the jet's maximum rate of climb. You can also see that the optimal climb speed for the jet is 100 km per hour faster than the optimal speed for the prop, and that's strictly due to engine differences since they are mounted on the same aircraft with the same characteristics and drag. At 595 km per hour, they have equal climb rates, and the jet has the advantage beyond that speed and has the top speed, top speed advantage by a decent margin, as we'll see on the next graph. The graph on the right shows the thrust of the piston engine in blue and the jet engine in red, and the drag of the aircraft in black. When the thrust line crosses the black curve, that's the top speed for that aircraft. For the piston engine, the top speed is 640 km per hour, while it's 675 km per hour for the jet. Another corollary for the piston versus jet comparison is that even if both have the same top speed, the jet would still have better energy retention beyond its top speed due to the jet thrust conservation with speed, while the piston engine's thrust would be lower at higher speed. It also means that a jet would have better dive acceleration beyond its top speed than a prop. As it stands, even the first generation jet engine makes the aircraft faster than the best piston engine available, with good propeller efficiency I might add. Still, the piston engine has much better climb and low speed performance. In reality though, the jet aircraft would weigh less since it doesn't need a 200kg propeller and wouldn't have any need for radiators which would re reduce drag. Mounting two jet engines would increase speed by 40% compared to only increasing speed by 26% if you mount two piston engines due to prop thrust reduction as speed increases. That's what they did to make the ME262 substantially faster than prop aircraft. A further advantage of the jet engine is its use of relatively lower grade fuel, since engine knock was not a concern on a jet engine. Last but not least, a fact that may come as a surprise to you is that it actually took nearly 4 times longer to make a BMW 801, the radial engine on the Focke-Wulf, than the Yumo 004 with 375 man-hours for the Yumo and 1400 man-hours for the BMW. The Yumo 004 required less skilled labor as well, which makes a big difference in mass production capability. This last graph shows the performance of the same typical World War II fighter if it were equipped with a jet engine with the same thrust to weight ratio as the GE J47 turbojet on the F-86 Sabre, a mere 5 years after World War II. Represented by the yellow curve, this next generation jet engine far strips the performance of the best piston engine at all but the lowest speed. This made it clear that the jet engine was the future for fighter aircraft. Engine development is actually the main contributor to increased performance of aircraft over the years, as opposed to materials, construction techniques, and aerodynamics. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and let me know what educational topics you'd like to see in the future. Au revoir.